the truth the girls. Hi everyone, it's Sonia here. Something very weird is going on with Wayfair. Are kids being shipped in armoires? Some of Wayfair's strange product listings have led to them being accused of being involved in human trafficking, not by the authorities, but by the internet. People are concerned that unusually highly priced cabinets on Wayfair named after missing people uh, may actually contain missing people inside. Wayfair has responded by denying that any of this is true. Um, I'm going to give you the whole lowdown. I totally investigated this. I did find some very strange things. And at the end, let me know what you think. Before I start, I just want to remind you, if you're looking to stock up on some MREs now for what is probably going to be coming this fall, my Patriot Supply are the go-to experts in emergency preparedness. Right now, you can save up to $100 off a four-week supply of their delicious and nutritious food that lasts up to 25 years. But you might need it as soon as next month if things continue to get worse. Don't let yourself get caught unprepared. Not when you can get a four-week supply of emergency food shipped right to your doorstep. Go to preparewithtruthergirls.com right now. That's preparewithtruthergirls.com. Yes, so you do get a $100 discount. And if you're interested, please click the link below for more information. Okay, so what is actually going on with Wayfair? So this started originally on Reddit. Uh, a user who goes by the name of Princess Peach 1987, according to Newsweek, described seeking out garage storage items with their husband when they came across the expensive cabinet listings, which I'm going to show you. While at first they surmised that they may have stumbled across unlisted drop shipping sales. Facebook posts also suspicious of the pricey listings made them more inclined to listen to their suspicion that there may be something more to the listings. Princess Peach 1987 described themselves as, quote, involved in a local organization that helps victims of human trafficking, which has led her to be suspicious most of the time now. They characterized their Reddit post as less of a direct accusation and more of an effort to see if anyone else had more details. So yes, it all started with um, Princess Peach 1987's post. This caught on very quickly on social media. Lots of tweets went out concerning the fact that Wayfair was selling these industrial grade cabinets for the strange price of ten to fifteen thousand dollars. Now, if you go and look up listings for industrial grade cabinets, you'll find that normally they sell for about five hundred to a thousand dollars, not ten to fifteen thousand. And what's odd too is that they all have rather unique women's names. Here's an example. Samaya five shelf storage cabinet selling for $12,899.99. What made people really suspicious is that they quickly realized that all the names of these cabinets were also the names of missing teenagers and women. So here's the cabinet named Samaya and here is a missing teenager whose name is Samaya, which is not the most common name. So it, it seems rather odd, not exactly like a probable coincidence. Here is a Yaritza storage cabinet selling for nearly $14,000. As it so happens, there is a 16 year old girl named Yaritza Castro who's been missing since June 10th, 2020. Again, a very unusual name and especially a very unusual name for a cabinet. Here's another one, Kyla shelf cabinet selling for over $12,000. And here is a missing Kyla Coleman. Notice that the name Kyla is spelled with an H, which is unusual. Uh, it also, it wasn't only cabinets, it was, it was cushions as well. The cushions also have strange names and absolutely outrageous prices. Since when does a cushion sell for $9,000? Why is this cushion that sells for nearly $10,000 named Duplessis, which happens to be the name, again, of a missing girl. I mean, I can't blame people for being weirded out and suspicious. It really is strange. So what people were thinking was that Wayfair is acting as a kind of front and that uh, they're, they're shipping cabinets that actually have missing girls inside of them. Don Gabriel tweeted that he worked for Wayfair and I wouldn't be surprised the boxes were heavy ASF for no reason 
we had something called a ASAPs, which meant we had to load them faster and all of them were effing huge. So you got somebody who says he worked at Wayfair saying, it sounds plausible to him. So I'm going to get into everything. I'm going to give you the whole story, but I just, this is just the background. So if you're wondering, well, what happened after that, besides the fact that everybody started sharing this on social media, one person said they tried to talk to Wayfarer and that they wouldn't give them a reason that the specs matches and prices varied so dramatically. So they called the traffic in hotline and they're opening a case. So someone out there followed up on it and called the authorities. So they have been notified. And then what happened after this got out on the internet was Wayfair deleted the listings of these cabinets, which just, of course, made people more suspicious. So here's Wayfair's side of the story. Wayfair said there was nothing nefarious about the cabinets. There is, of course, no truth to these claims, a Wayfair spokesperson said in a statement to Business Insider. The products in question are industrial grade cabinets that are accurately priced. Hmm. Recognizing that the photos and descriptions provided by the supplier did not adequ adequately explain the high price points, we have temporarily removed the products from the site to rename them and to pro provide a more in-depth description and photos that accurately depict the product to clarify the price point. So I, it's weird because they say that they're accurately priced, but then they say the, the high prices are unexplainable and they're going to take it down until they get it sorted out. So yeah, they are totally overpriced. Okay, and like I said though, it's not only cabinets. This is where the price is, is really weird. I mean, if there could be some industrial fireproof cabinet that sells for $12,000, I wouldn't know. But there are definitely no throw pillows that sell for $10,000. And yet they've got these um, Zodiac sign astrological constellation personalized throw pillows with names like Duplessis and Jejik, which are selling for 10 grand. So let's keep that in mind. Yeah, all the pillows have really strange names, very high prices, and these are pillows that normally would sell for about $40. So, you know, Wayfarer, I mean, if you, if you say the cabinets are accurately priced, please don't tell me that you think that these pillows are accurately priced. So after that, once this got out, people also noticed that if you go to Yandex, the Russian search engine, and you put in the SRC USA followed by the SKU number, I'm not sure how they figured this out, on those cabinets, you'll find some rough SHIT in images. Somebody figured out that if you put in some numbers and letters that correspond to these listings, what you get is pictures of girls with clothes on, but nonetheless, and scantily clad very young women or teenagers. I really don't know how they came up with putting these numbers in Yandex and what these pictures mean, but in any case, it didn't exactly help to allay people's suspicions. None of the SKU searches return images of a single child, which would seem to run counter to the implication that the Wayfair SKUs secretly provide data regarding the specific child to be purchased. Newsweek does have a point there. In addition, following the search engine instructions with any random string of numbers returns the exact same results. So yeah, uh, not sure whether the Yandex issue really brings us any closer to the truth of the matter. Okay, so that's the basics of it. So here's what I found out. Okay, so these products that are listed on Wayfair are actually from a third party seller, which is a company called Bungalow Rose. You can look up Bungalow Rose, you'll see that they sell on Wayfair, they sell on All Modern, Jossen, Maine, Birch Lane. They're, they're all over the place. Um, let's say you go to All Modern and you look up Bungalow Rose products, you're going to find something like this. They got carpets, they got furniture, plant pots, and all their products have unusual names. They're either last names or unusual first names, usually female first names, such as Raya, Phillips, Siobhan. So I, I started getting a weird hunch, you know? So I just looked up Raya Missing. You take the name of pretty much any product from um, Bungalow Rose and you look for that name plus Missing and then you find out, sure enough, someone with that name is Missing. 
missing teen Jasmine Reese Raya found dead near Iowa River. Let's say you look up Siobhan. That was the name of another piece of furniture. What was it? Siobhan armchair. Okay, look up Siobhan. Siobhan missing. Police searching for 18-year-old Brampton woman. Missing Siobhan Davis has been reported missing. Once again, it's the name of a missing person. Um, also, what's kind of weird is if you look up the, some of the names, like Menasha, Menasha missing, it turns out it, Menasha is not um, a person, but it's a place where somebody went missing. Wife, daughter of Menasha, Wisconsin self-storage owner found. So wife and daughter of somebody from Menasha had been missing. I thought that was really weird that there's like the big plant pot and the little plant pot. And I know that their names wasn't Menasha, but then it turns out the mother and daughter in Menasha had been missing. Yes, they were found, but they had been missing. So it gets weirder though. You'll discover that actually, yes, a lot of these names totally correspond to missing people, but some of them have been found, not only the people in Menasha, but like Samaya Moomin, this teenager, who was listed here also on the Columbus, Ohio news site on Facebook. Not only is she not missing, but she even posted her own response to this on YouTube. I'll let her speak for herself. It's so weird. Ain't nobody missing. Y'all talking about I'm missing. Okay, so what if I've been in the hospital fighting corona. They died about this shit. Y'all shit seen here. Got my name next to a motherfucking cabinet talking about I'm missing. This is not no argument. Fuck is you talking about? Like, I'm telling you as as me, as me alive and well, not missing. Fuck is you talking about? I'm telling you straight from the person that you posted claiming that I'm missing and, and I'm in the cabinet and all types of shit. Fuck out of here. I'm not missing. No. They, that whole article talking about I'm missing and went out because basically, long story short, I got parents who don't really want to be parents and uh, you feel me? Like just being weird and motherfuckers know where I'm at. You know how many motherfuckers parents, they said they was missing and they got kicked the fuck out? Fuck out of here. That's weird. Why? Post them. God damn it. <laughs> Why y'all must be? <laughs> And that is not the only person who is not missing. One of the pillows that was going for $10,000, roughly, was named Jijik. That is a very unusual name, especially for a pillow. And then if you look up Jijik, you find that indeed someone with that name was missing, but he's been found. Cameron James Jijik has been located. Um, but still, the, the name is so unusual and the listing the pillow for $10,000 with this unusual name is so strange that it's hard to believe that this is just random. So why are they naming their pillow Jejik, uh, which happens to be a missing child? Who, as it turns out, is not missing. Uh, okay, I have a theory here which explains maybe part of this. I think someone who's working for Woodland Rose has been using missing persons list to come up with names for their products. I mean, to me, that seems really obvious. Um, whether there are actually missing people in some of the products or not, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. It's another issue. The names themselves, to me, it, it seems totally improbable that it's a coincidence that so many of these really unusual names happen to be the names of missing people. I think that when they're looking for names for their products, all the stuff, even the stuff that's priced normally, carpets, chairs, uh, plant pots, you name it, you know, you can't just name them all Nicole and Sarah. I mean, how, are they just, you know, running out of ideas for names or is there something more sinister to it? I don't know, but I definitely think at this point that they're sourcing their names from lists of missing persons. So people like Cameron James Jejic and Samaya Moomin, um, obviously they cannot be in a storage cabinet if they're not missing which means that you can rule out the idea that all of those storage cabinets are full of the missing people they're named after. And there's another thing, which is that how have people forgotten that if, if human trafficking happens online, it doesn't happen on the front part of the internet. It happens in the back. It happens underneath. It happens on the dark web. Human trafficking is known to occur on the dark web. 
there have been articles written about it. Uh, people who have engaged in it have been busted. The authorities are well aware of this. A new set of search tools called Memex, developed by DARPA, peers into the deep web to reveal illegal activity. So, I mean, people are getting caught even doing it on the dark web. So why would they do it on Wayfair? And uh, Vice News had done an investigation into this called My Brief Encounter with the Dark Web Human Trafficking Site, where they tried to pose as a person who wanted to buy a young girl. And a um, couple things. First of all, the person who was running the site was very you know, wise to what they were up to, figured they were either Interpol or a journalist and didn't, didn't bite. Um, I mean, didn't go for it. But moreover, the listings were you know, $140,000 to $180,000. A trafficked person doesn't sell for ten dollars to $14,000. They go for a lot more than that. The newest development in this story is that the recently arrested Ghislaine Maxwell had tipped off authorities about Wayfair. This was sparked by a recently emerged photo of Maxwell with someone who is allegedly Bill Hutcherson, the president of operations at Wayfair. According to Mia, it started with Republican political candidate Angela Stanton King tweeting, did Ghislaine Maxwell tip authorities off about Wayfair? Personally, I don't think so because actually um, all this business about Wayfair started with the, uh, po the Reddit posts from Princess Peaches 1987. Unless, of course, that Princess Peaches is actually Ghislaine Maxwell. <laughs> That would be interesting. So look, this is where I'm coming from on this at this point. I'm glad that people are alert and that they're keeping an eye out and that if they find some suspicious activity, they report it. That's what people should be doing. But I think something else is going on. Honestly, I, I don't think, I mean, just, just my intuition. I don't think this is a real case of trafficking. It could be, right? But to me, the evidence here points that it's something else, as I showed you before already. Some of the people the cabinets or pillows are named after, they're not even missing. So you can rule out that all those missing people are in all those cabinets. The price doesn't match what a person would be getting trafficked for. You know, and it, and it seems really odd that it would be getting done by a third party site on Wayfair. Here's what I really think. I think somebody at Bungalow Rose um, put up some very strange listings. I mean, nobody is gonna buy a pillow for $10,000. So what is the listing there for? It could be to get the attention of the public. It could be for two things. Either this was a way that they could draw attention to the company so that they would get investigated and then maybe busted for doing something illegal, nefarious, or it could be a kind of hoax. It could be that someone who's working for the company put these listings up knowing that the internet would notice and that we'd all start talking about that. It could be actually a PSYOP. I'm always on the lookout for PSYOPs. So that's what I think. You look at this evidence and tell me what you think. Look at the fact that all the names, they're all from missing persons. And then some of these missing persons aren't actually missing. What do you think this means? You know, Anyway, I thought it was an interesting story. I don't think it is what people think it is, but time will tell. Maybe it's a bust, um, but let me know what you think. Leave me your comments. Thank you for joining me in the chat. Don't forget to check out the link below for the, um, the discount on the MREs. God bless you guys. Thanks for listening to me, and I'll see you next time.